All righty, so now we've got the concepts of those three things down. Let's put them into action. What we're going to do is we're gonna make it so that we can choose whether or not to put SSH access at all on our security group. To do so, we'll need to make a new parameter, create a condition with some intrinsic functions, and then modify our security group with all three. So let's go ahead and get started. I am over here in my template file. And the first thing we need to do is we need to create a parameter for this. And the reason we need to create a parameter is because, <laughs> you know, since we're making a condition, we want to give control to whoever's launching the stack as to whether or not uh, we allow SSH access. So we're just going to open up a new parameter here. I'm going to call this param allow SSH, well, SSH access. And in here, first thing we're going to do is type as usual. Oh, what type is it? Well, you would probably want to say that this is a Boolean, right? If you're <laughs> from a development background, but there is no Boolean <laughs> in, in the world of uh, in the world of cloud formation. So when you want to do a Boolean, you actually have to do a string. Okay, so that, that already kind of sounds a little odd. So how do we make this really Boolean, right? Well, we're going to use a property for parameters called allowed value. So let's go take a look at that. I'm over here in the parameters documentation. I'm going to click on properties and allowed values is just an array containing whatever you're allowed to put in for this parameter. And we just want two values, true or false. So we're going to kind of make our own Boolean here. So we'll put in this property allowed values, make sure you uppercase it. And we're going to have two values, true and false. Okay, so that's pretty good. So let's do something else though. Let's add a default value. There we go. And the default value is just going to be true. And then one more thing that we want to do. What happens if, you know, they're being uh, clever <laughs> and decide instead of choosing from the drop down, they want to just try and type something in. Maybe they're calling this template from the command line interface where, you know, in the console with allowed values, it's going to turn it into a drop down. But with, uh, with the command line interface, you could pass up whatever you want. Well, there's another property called constraint description and constraint description will show a message if the constraint in our case, allowed values is violated. So I'm going to just put in constraint description please select well input true or false or ssh access and there we go if some developers trying to be clever or they're just not paying attention and not reading they'll get that little message so that they know what they should do okay so there's the parameter but now we need to use it and so you may just think oh great we're just going to grab this come down here and do some magic but we can't. What we need to do is we need to remember that there is another property, one, one of these nine top level properties, and that property is the conditions key. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open this up here, conditions. I really like putting resources towards the bottom since you know all this other stuff tends to be used throughout of it. And so the conditions key here, I've got the documentation open for it. So conditions key, the way you can think of this little area is it's just an area for us to create a bunch of conditions that we then take and use throughout the resources portion of our template. And the conditions are going to be, they need to be a test that evaluate to true or false. Now, again, there's not really a true, true or false, but this is something that CloudFormation parses in the background. So if that sounds confusing, you can just kind of ignore it. The long story is short, in a nutshell, you know, in summary, all we're doing is we're just going to make a condition in this area and using those condition intrinsic functions, have it evaluate to true or false based on the value of this parameter. So let's make a new condition and we're going to call it allow SSH access. And so what do we do now? You know, we obviously we could set this to true and then <laughs> and then it would always be true, but that's not really a condition. Well, what we need to use and we, we need to use one of those condition functions. And if I have these open again over here and specifically, we're going to want to use which one? Well, probably function equals what we're probably going to want to do is check and see if the value of this param allow SSH access is true. So what would we be doing? We would be saying, okay, if param allow SSH access is true, right? That's pretty much it. So how do you use this? 
Well, here's the declaration. It's just the same thing. You, the key is the function name, and then it takes two inputs, so it needs an array. And they have a nice little example here, even being used with a condition, that pretty much shows you exactly what we need to do. So we need to make it a function equals, and then we need to give it an array of the reference of either the, well, in this case, the parameter, and then what we want to check against. So let's hop back over. And this is going to be your first, uh, um, the first time you're exposed to us nesting intrinsic functions, which you can absolutely do. So we're going to open up function equals. Okay, so now we've told CloudFormation when it gets this value, hey, we're looking at an intrinsic function, specifically the equals, and now we need to follow its rules. And its rules are, first up, what do we want to test? Well, we want to test that parameter. So let me just grab this here. There we go. And what do we want to check for it to be? Well, we want to check for it to be true. And there we go. That's the condition. That's really all there is. And you can make a whole set of these based on parameters to give yourself a lot of power over the control flow of your template and how it responds to different things that you input. Now, that all being said, that's great, but how do we use this condition? Well, there's two ways that you can use a condition. You can use the condition to control whether or not an entire resource gets made or whether or not a particular property gets included on a resource. Now we're not gonna use the first one, we're not gonna do the condition as to whether or not a resource is made, but if you wanted to, all you have to do is it's actually one of the top properties for the resource. So if we wanted to make this this resource made based on this condition, well, we just add another property called condition. So note that there is no plural here, just condition. And then we would just put allow SSH access. And if we did it like this, what would happen is when we launch this template, if this is set to true, it would make the security group. If it was set to false, it would not. However, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to control whether or not this statement gets put in because our goal here is to make sure that this SSH rule is only added if our user who's launched this template has said true to whether or not we want to allow SSH access. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna use another one of those condition functions. So let's hop over here to the docs. Which one are we gonna use? Well, we're gonna use function if. And how does function if function? <laughs> well, just like all other intrinsic functions, we use it as the key. And then it takes three inputs, the condition name, and then what we want it to set if the condition evaluates the true, and then what we want it to set if the value if the condition evaluates to false. So pretty simple. Let's go ahead and see this in action. So what we have to do here now may be a little bit confusing, but remember if you want AWS to not think that you're just trying to put an actual value in, you need to use one of those keywords. So in our case, it's that function if, is this capitalized? It is, you see this is why you gotta pay attention <laughs> to these little colons and these uppercases here. And we know that it takes an array of inputs. It takes the condition. Well, what, do we, what is the condition here? Well, that's pretty simple. It just allow SSH access. So we'll just grab that. Allow SSH access. Okay, great. So if it's true, what do we want it to do? Well, we wanted to add this statement here, right? So we'll just grab that, drop it in, clean up the, the formatting here. And now we've got the first part of the function if, according to the docs. We have a condition and then the value if true. If this is true, we will add this statement. Now you might think that that's great, especially if you've done a lot in JavaScript and other different languages where you can just say if something and then just move on. But this will fail if it's false because it'll still want to do something and we haven't passed it that the, the, the if false value. So what do you do? If you don't want anything, I mean, you may just think, well, I guess I'm just not gonna put anything, or maybe you think you should do this, but you can't do that. What we actually have to do is we actually need to use a pseudo parameter. Specifically, let me hop back over here to the pseudo parameter documentation. We need to use the AWS no value. And here we go, it just describes exactly what it does. So it even tells you this is probably what you want to use with function if. And what it does is if you return AWS no value, it is just going to straight up not print anything at all. And that's exactly what we want. 
So all we need to do here is we just do need to do a ref, right? Because this is a pseudo parameter. And the way you reference pseudo parameters is just with the ref and then AWS, no value. And there we go. With that done, now, if this is set to false, then this condition will evaluate to false. And if this condition evaluates to false, well, then in, right here in this statement, instead of adding this extra rule, this extra security group ingress, it'll just print nothing at all, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so there we go. Now our template is set up to conditionally add SSH access based on user input through our parameters.